to this problem but lord let them know that you are the solution to this problem let them know god to cry out to you and ask you the solution and you will honestly give it to them father god Oh, God, all of those te television workers, oh, God, those radio workers, almighty God, that spending timeless time, oh, God, to bring us the news about this virus, that we can walk safe, almighty God. We ask you right now to cover them. Send your blood, almighty God, those that know you and those that don't know you, Lord, because you said in your word that you'll reign upon the just and the unjust tonight, Jesus, because they're doing, oh, God, the work that you have told them to do to love their neighbor as themselves. Lord, it's because they love their neighbor that they self like God, where they're putting their family, oh God, they're putting their family in danger, oh Heavenly Father, to go to places to interview, oh God. Tonight, Jesus, send the angels, oh God, to disinfect them, Lord. Oh God, send the angels of disinfection, Lord, to disinfect it, Lord, to infect them, oh God Almighty. Send down your infection, oh God, disinfected, oh God, to disinfect them tonight, oh God. Oh God, let the breeze be different, oh God Almighty, let the wind they blow be different, let the air they breathe be different tonight, God, while they're doing your will, Almighty God. Oh God, that reporter, Chris Almighty God, that on the battlefield, oh God, that gone through that, Lord, but I know you already touched him, Lord, because we ask you to touch him. We ask you, Lord, to put him back on the air, oh Almighty God, to bring the message, oh God. So tonight, Jesus, we give you thanks for his healing. We give you thanks for his deliverance tonight, Jesus. Oh Father God, the mayor, oh God, and the governor, oh God, of this of the states, oh God, that are going through so much things, Lord God. Oh, God, it is not an easy road that they're going through, Jesus. It is not easy what they're going through, Lord, because they are the head of the people. You set them over head of, over your people, Lord. And I know that they're going through a nice, let's sleep. Oh, God Almighty, because the people, life is in their hands. But let them know they got to consult you. They have to touch heaven. They have to knock on heaven door for you to open heaven door, Jesus, and pour down your disinfectant upon the land. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, you said sin is a reproach. Oh, God, but holiness oh God of oh holiness exalt a nation let them know Lord until holiness start to exalt the nation it will be plague on top of plague almighty God Lord we don't want to see another one like this one this one is the worst you have ever showed oh God over two to over four hundred years ago this is the only one that you ever show like this Jesus so tonight oh God we ask you because we know who you are we know you you are a merciful God. We know you are a compassionate God. So tonight, Almighty God, we ask you to, to comfort them. Comfort every governor, Lord, every mayor. Oh, God, comfort my God and my president. Comfort those who are working in, the, in, in parliament right now, in Congress. Oh, God Almighty, to find a cure. Those scientists, Lord, let them know that you have the medicine because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And all that dwell within the earth belong to you, Lord. So even the virus belong to you, Jesus. Because everything on this earth belong to you. Let them know to open their mouth and cry out. Let the nation go and repent as Lord. Let the nation bow before you. Let the nation cry out. As many of you cry out, oh God Almighty. When you're about to destroy Nineveh, Lord, you send the prophet, O oh God Almighty Jonah, to warn the king of Nineveh. And the king of Nineveh, Lord, take heed. And he bowed down, Lord God. And he cried out, O oh God, in repentance, Lord. And Lord God, you repented of what you were going to do to them, Lord. Let them cry out, God, for repentance for the nation. Because, Lord, they have sinned against you. They go above your Bible laws and make laws above your Bible laws, Lord, to suit man, man, man life, lifestyle, to suit man, God. They make some critical law that they should not make, oh God, and they comfort man heart and discomfort your heart. Oh God, tonight I'm asking you to have forgiveness for them, Lord. I ask you, Lord, for forgiveness for America. I ask you, Lord, for forgiveness for Jamaica and the Caribbean and all those, God. I ask you, Lord, for forgiveness for Italy, 
Oh God, drop on everywhere that this virus go, Lord. I ask you for forgiveness for them, Jesus. And I'm asking you, Lord, to lift the embargo. <laughs> oh God, it is an embargo. It is a confusion. Lord God, the whole world is in confusion. But you are not the art of confusion. So I know, God, you are not happy to see what's going on. You want the joy to come back on this land, God. So I ask you, Lord, to bring back the joy. Bring back the joy to your people. Bring back the joy to your people who worship you. Bring back the joy to your earth, oh God. I know right now, Jesus, you are not pleased to see worship cannot go on in your house. Oh God, because you say we must worship you in spirit and in truth. So tonight, God, we beg you, Father God, to lift the embargo. We ask the Lord to lift the embargo because I know this time, Lord, they will know how serious you are. Oh God Almighty, not to trouble you again, not to provoke you again. They will know not to provoke you to anger again, Lord. So Father God, tonight, I rest America in your hands. I rest the world in your hands. I rest Oh, God, it's in your hands, Lord, because all belong to you. You have the whole world in your hands. You have the whole world in your hands. You have the whole world in your hands. So, Lord, God Almighty, no one can pluck it out of your hands. We only ask in you, Lord, for your mercy. We ask in you, Lord, for your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, your mercy, Jesus. And I know you're going to grant it, Lord. I know you're going to grant your mercy. I know you're going to grant your mercy, Lord. <laughs> I know you're going to grant your mercy, Jesus. Because we are praying and we are asking you. And you said, Lord, if a righteous man pray, Lord, you answer. So all the righteous people who are praying, Lord, I know you're going to answer us. All the righteous people who are praying right now, Lord, I know you're going to answer us. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. Have your way, Lord, in this world. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. And we give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name tonight. Hallelujah. Have your own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make the world after thy will. What I am waiting, willing and still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God, in this Bible class tonight, let the word go out to your children. And we ask you, Lord, to have your own way. We are waiting, Lord, for your deliverance. We are waiting for your mercy. Because we know that you're a man of, of compassion. Because you heal by your wound. And because you heal by your wound, we know that you are the God of compassion. Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Tonight we are back in our Bible class for another, another series of the Bible tonight. And I hope all of you in radio land tonight are hearing me, all of you in television land are hearing me tonight. And I ask you to join me. I ask you to share it with your friends and your family tonight as we are in this place. We're not alone. We have angels encamped around us. As I said, you have seen the Lord, and he's high lifted up, and his strength filled the temple, and the angels cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. I know that it's just three of us in here tonight, but I know that there's thousands of angels in this place crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord tonight. So send some. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in that lesson. So we're going to continue in that lesson tonight. Hallelujah. We 
we're going to make an affirmation. I and the Bible is one because the word became flesh and walk among men. Help me, Lord, to understand your word. Help me to live by your word. Help me, Father God, to be a walking epistle of your word. As I read your word daily, help me, Lord, to understand your word more. Help us, Lord, to walk in the precept of your word that we can be true Christian and saints for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Well, tonight we are on this. this I love this because it, it, is a, it is a coming of Christ. It is a what? The coming of Christ. It is the coming of Christ, and because we know he's coming back again, there's no doubt about it, there's no question about it, there's no argument about it. A lot of times we argue about something and we win, and we win because we argue about it. But this one, we cannot argue that he's not coming and win. The one that say that he's coming will win the battle because he have to come back. Because his word cannot lie. So as we go into the word tonight about his coming, let us continue. Uh, we talk about uh, the, the church, which is last week, week before last. Was it last week? Mm. I will get there. I will get there. Every time I put, okay, I'll get there. And um, we finished where we, talk, we were talking, talking about the church and his bride. And his bride, who do you think is his bride? Who is the church? Okay, it's not the building is his bride. The people are his bride. And Matthew 25 verse 10 it said, and I and when, and while they went to buy the, the buy the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. So there's a marriage going to go on. But are you ready to receive that bride? Because the, the ten virgin five have their their oil ready. Five was ready for the marriage, but five was in between ready. Although they were virgin, but they were not ready. But there were five that, that was virgin, but they also was ready for that marriage. And when the bridegroom came in at midnight, they were out. They were out seeking oil because they did not have enough oil in the lamp. So now, as a, ch as a child of God, you must know how much, how much oil you have in your lamp. Because God is not coming for a half full lamp. He's coming for a full lamp. And because they did not have a full, their life was not fully complete, yes, they were virgin, yes, they were serving, but their heart and their mind was not totally connected and committed to God. That is why they were shut out. When the bridegroom, when the bridegroom came, he only found five that was totally committed to him. The other five was outside. Maybe they were outside trying to to, to fix something that they believe, some carnal life or some carnal things, or they were doing something carnally and forgot that they have a bride that they have to serve. They forget that they have a bride that is over them. They forget that the bride, the bride, the bridegroom, they forget that the bridegroom is head over them. So they've gone out seeking something away from the bridegroom. I'm encouraging you not to seek nothing away from this bridegroom. Hallelujah. Not to seek nothing away from this bridegroom. Revelation 19, 
7 to 9 said, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of senses. And he said unto me, Right, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saying of God. So you see in Revelation, it's talking about the marriage, it's talking about the marriage of the Lamb to his wife. Hmm? To his wife, and her, but and when the wife was completely ready, who are his wife? Who are his wife? The senses, the senses, the senses. He come to marry the senses to take them into his what? Kingdom, to take the senses into his kingdom where we all can live together. Hey, how much, of, how much of you are ready for that marriage? And that marriage is almost here. But we have to know if we can stand before that bridegroom and that bridegroom look at us and dress us in white. White, fine linen. I mean, he's not going to dress you in no gabardine or any other color. He's going to dress you in the color that represents uh, righteousness. White is, is, is clearly a sign of righteousness. And he say, you see, God is a unique God also. And you see where he did not dress uh, his, his, his bride into rough clothes. He dressed them into fine linen. He dressed the senses into fine linen. Hallelujah. And he said unto her, and to me, that is talking up to John, he said to John, write this, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true saying of God. So Jesus said to, 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 um, to, to John, write it and bring it back to show the people that it will be a marriage it will be a marriage, and it uh, and the and, and the and the the, 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 the the groom, the groom, the groom, the bride, the bride and the groom have to come together as one. The bride and the groom have to come together as one. So in the carnal marriage, they say when you marry, you become one in the flesh. Well, this marriage is not one in the flesh. It will be one in the spirit. So you have to prepare for this marriage that you can be one in the spirit. When Jesus came, when Jesus come back for us, we are, we are ready to twine with him. We are ready to what? To twine with him as a marriage couple. Eh? to take us up to our home that he gone to prepare for you. If you want to make, if you want to know, make it clearer, clear. When you married into a, a carnal marriage, your husband took you from your parents' home and he have to provide a place for you. Hmm? So when Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, he going to make Houses, <laughs> mansion, mansion for each one of his what? Bride. A place of total security. A place where there will be no more, no more crying, no more weeping. A place where it will be only joy. I'm telling you tonight in this Bible class, you got to get yourself ready for this marriage. And this marriage cannot come with sparks. This, this groom, this bride, this bride is coming to marry, have to be spotless. 
That means sin cannot be a part of this, bur this, 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 this bride. Sin cannot be a part of this bride. This bride has to divorce every carnal way. Hey. This bride has to divorce the world. This bride has to divorce everything that looks like the world. This bride has to divorce it to marry this new bride, this new bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So are you ready to divorce everything? Are you ready to divorce this world and follow Jesus? No. You, if you don't follow him, no, you can't marry him. He wants you just for himself. And if that selfish, he's selfish. It's because he loves us. It's not a selfish love. It's an unconditional love where he loves us enough to want us for himself. So uh, do you love him enough to want him for yourself? Because the only way he can marry you, you have to love him enough to want him for yourself. So each individual should want him for their self. And make a pact say he is mine and I am his. And then you will know that you will be at that marriage. You'll be at that marriage. You'll be at that marriage supper of the Lamb. Where you will be, where you will be, you will, he will, he will, he will dawn you up. He will fix you up and put on your white linen gown. What a day. What a day that will be. Hmm? Oh God. Hallelujah. You see, this marriage, this marriage, you would slightly compare it to the marriage in, in Ephesians 5, 23 to 32. You can read that for me. Okay? It would take too much time if I read it. Ephesians 5, verse 32 to, verse 23 to 32. It's the same kind of a marriage, but the difference between this marriage, the difference between this marriage, you can walk away from from the from the from the Ephesian marriage and you still survive. But if you walk away from this marriage of the Lamb, you're not gonna survive. You cannot survive if you walked away from the marriage of the of this lamb. You can walk away from your husband and your wife and you survive. But this this marriage I'm telling you about, it is totally different. It's a marriage what have to happen to who he chose for it to happen to. It's a marriage that cannot be broken. It's a marriage that have no, it have no, you would call it no, this marriage with the, with the lamb, it's a marriage that don't carry no weight. No weight at all. No condition. Once he marry you, you are his. So there can be no condition make on that marriage because he marry you already and take you home. So I'm saying to you tonight, if you want to, to know the seriousness of marrying to Christ, look at, the, at Ephesians 5, 23. And he tell you who? He is the head of you. He is the head. You're at the head of him. That means that if he's the head of you, you have to obey his will, obey his commandment, follow his footstep, follow what he say, that you, he can marry you. If you are a disobedient bride, he's not going to marry you. Just like if you living with a, a, a into a relationship for months or years, and you find that the relationship not going to work, you're not going to marry them. You will be saved there, yes, but you're not going to marry them until you walk, you leave the relationship because you don't want no problem. God don't want no problem in heaven again. Once there were a problem there with Satan, he decided that there will be no more problem in heaven. So he gave, he gave us a, he gave us a, com a commitment, a command. He said we have to be holy and righteous. We have to have faith, holiness, righteousness, and faith. We have to be a saints. 
We can't be a church goer. We have to be a saint for us to enter in. Hmm? You have to be what? Spotless to meet that bride. <laughs> you have to be spotless to meet that bride. You have to live a clean and a holy life for that bride to marry you. How many of you can do that? We all can do that because we were created in righteousness. Remember, we were not created in nothing else but righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of who? God. And if we are the righteousness of him, that means if we sin, we can go back to that righteousness when you repent and ask him forgiveness of your sin. He will gladly put you back in your righteous self, in your righteous mind, in your righteous thoughts, and your righteous will. Hmm? So I'm encouraging you, pick back up the righteousness of God. The world allow you to take on unrighteousness, which is not you. Because he did not create you in unrighteousness. He created you in righteousness. But that Satan, that wicked dragon, that fool Adam and Eve, allow the righteousness of God to turn into unrighteousness. But then he came 2,000 years ago, and he settled that debt. He settled it on Calvary. He settled it. He said, I shame it on Calvary, and I take back my children into their righteousness. So it's for us just to follow that part of his righteousness. Just follow that part and you'll be saved. Hallelujah. That's complete the bride and the groom. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is coming again to be united in marriage with his bride. The church. And to celebrate the marriage supper. So I'm coming to what? Celebrate the marriage supper. And to come to reunite with us who will be his bride. And then he will what? Take us in his chamber in heaven. Take us up in heaven like what John had seen. A sea of glass. Where everything is beautiful. Luke 19, verse 12. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman, 19, 12 to, 12 to 15. He said, therefore, an, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a, a kingdom and to return. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom from he, then, then he commanded the servant to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Everybody got trade, but one got bury it. Huh? So you bury your righteousness in sin. You bury your righteousness in sin. So you have to know, come out of the grave of sin. And receive back your righteousness. All right? Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So you see, all the holy angels are going to come. Why? Because they have to come to the wedding. <laughs> All the holy angels get an invitation to come to the wedding. What a day. When you see all those angels in their white, linen, linen, lily white robe, riding on their choices, coming with the king to the wedding. What a royal wedding. I don't want to miss the royal wedding there. I want to be the, 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 the bride of that royal wedding. A wedding that no man paid for. A wedding that already bought 
and paid for in excellency. Priceless marriage, priceless ring, priceless dress. Everything is priceless. Can you imagine those angels marching with the trumpet, blowing the trumpet? Here come the bridegroom coming for his bride. I want to be one. And I hope all of you want to be one of that bride. It's going to be a glorious time. What a banquet. Mama, shake it up, sir. Mama, shiama. Hey. What what a banquet that would be. Just imagine 10,000 of angels. Because the word of God said, <clears throat> When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, in his glory, and all the, ho all the holy angels, all the holy angels with him, that means that the whole of heaven coming. Oh, Jesus, the whole of heaven coming for me and you. If you decide to live holy and righteously, if you decide to become a saint, can you imagine, my, 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 when the whole heaven coming to meet the bride, wife, the church, the church. Cannot comprehend this. Cannot comprehend it. You cannot even imagine it. The whole a heaven coming to find to come in for us who decide to live like saints. You see how important we are if we allow ourselves to be important. If we allow ourselves to be what important, we are so important to Christ. We are so important to God till he carried into his whole heaven to come to this wedding. That's how we are important to him. Let us not be mediocre. Let us not live a mediocre lifestyle when we are important. Let sin don't take us to a place of just um, a lifestyle of, of wealth and lifestyle of everything else and forget that marriage. Forget that day. My God. Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6. Behold the day come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his day, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby we shall be called the Lord our righteousness. This is the name that we, sh we, we, we should be called. This is the name that he should, that, this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. When he said he sit upon David's throne, he make a commitment with David, the branch, and the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment. He's saying that he, he leave a kingship down here under David's line because he have to come back again as king to come for his queen. His queen senses. Because a king can marry nothing but a queen. So we're not common, we're not, we're, we are not what common subjects. <laughs> we are royal priesthood. That's why he said he make us to be a royal priesthood set apart. Just like how the queen set apart in England, or any queen set apart with power and might, the children of God who are senses supposed to be set apart. That means that a child of God must not be mingling with everything that looks like that lifestyle. 
No child of God should live a lifestyle as a subject. No child of God should live a lifestyle as a subject. We should live a lifestyle as a king and queen of the most high God. Hmm? Not a common subject. We should be living a royal priesthood lifestyle. Huh? How can you live that royal priesthood lifestyle? You go by the word of God. You live by his word. You exercise his word in your life. You walk in the precept of his word. You walk in his precept. You be like him. You be like him because he left the kingship down here to show us that we are queen. We are prince and princesses and queen. We are no, we are no subjects, common subjects. You are joint, fully, fully joint here with him. You wrapped up with him as a partnership. You are one in a partnership with him. A covenant partnership that cannot be broken by him. It's broken by you. But he cannot break that covenant. But you can break it, but you can go back to him and join back to that covenant. And he will surely receive you back. He will marry you. Huh? That means his covenant always stand. So don't care how far you've gone in sin. You can come back and remarry. You can come back and he take you back. It's not like those husband or wife who you commit a sin and they don't forgive you. And they believe, oh, I can't go back to you because you commit this crime. No. The worst kind of sin. I repented of it in taking you back. This husband don't have nothing unfaithful about him. This husband faithful all the way. Huh? Why would you not want that husband? Hey. That husband, Chrissy, he faithful all the way. No matter what you do, you repent about it and take you back. You could backslide 20 times and you repent in taking you back. He will not miss, he will not. He will not turn his back on a backslider who repent. Once you repent, he's going to take you back. Tell me what more could we want? Tell me what more could you want? Would you, want, would you not want that husband? Well, I want that husband. I may keep him. I don't know about you, but I will keep that husband. The husband that will not cheat on me. Beat me. And don't, and don't appreciate me. And don't take care of me. I want that husband. And all of you should want that husband. To make the husband that you have, and the work that you have, you have joy with it. Without that husband, you're not going to have joy with a carnal wife or a carnal husband. That husband, that first husband, have to be the head of your house. What I said to you, that husband, this bride, this bridegroom that I'm teaching you about tonight, if he's not the head of your house, you and your carnal husband and wife now get now not, not going to happy. Uno go to quarrel and argue for every little thing because the, 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 the husband of comfort. The husband that is unconditional is not in the wedding, in the marriage. <laughs> the husband that will, that will tap you on the shoulder and tell you, no, 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 forgive. It's not in the marriage. 
So if that husband is not in the marriage, you expect this husband to do good or this wife to do good and you put up the head of your house, the head of your church, because you are the church. If not the building in the church, you are the church. And if you put on the head of your church, huh? How you expect the carnal husband wife to operate? Because the head is not there. <laughs> so get back the head of your house. Because you are the church. Get back the head of your house in your life. That your carnal marriage can be well. And you can be well. So get back the head of your household, which is Christ Jesus. Which is Christ Jesus. And you don't have a cheating husband or a cheating wife. Because Christ Jesus will be the head of, it, head of them. And they can bring that nonsense to him. So he shall call the Lord our, our, our mean. We own him. We totally own him. The Lord, our righteousness. That means we totally own him. Psalms 2 verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. He set his king upon his holy hill of Zion. What is Zion? The holy city. What made the holy city? The holy saints. Holiness, holy saints make a holy city. Holy saints make up a holy city that he can say it is what? Mount Zion. Hmm? So if you are not holy, you cannot make up a holy city. Zechariah 14.9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. So are they going to come with all of these little gods and these little kings and these little people that call themselves ruler and controller. And that day and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. All the earth, he will come back and be king all over. And it will be one Lord and his name one. So it, couldn't, so it can't be two no more. It will be one when he come and lock down that Satan, who is acting as king of this earth. It will be no more king of this earth. It will be only one king, and his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Revelation 19, 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name that with it he should smit the nation, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he tried it, the, the, wine, the wine press of the furnaces, and wrought a rod of iron. Now the nations all over the whole world are, are, are seeing his hand. So we see that his coming is near. It's written in Revelation that in, when he's near to come, we will see all of these things. His sharp sword that, with, in, with, it, it, that smit the nation. Look on this virus. It's a, it's a sharp sword. He's not taking an, a, 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 a sword that you just take and hit somebody. Talking about the plagues, the destructions, and all of those things that he will send to the world to let man know that he is the king and lord of lords of this earth. So let us not just take the coronavirus and when it's over, you go back to your same lifestyle. These are revela this sign that we are seeing is revelation sign. Sign of time. That Jesus coming back to take back his world. Sign of time showing us that he's coming back to, the, to, to reclaim his world from Satan. Revelation 20 verse 4. And I saw thrones 
and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the soul of men that were beheaded. So I said, all of those people that were beheaded, now we are going to see them. All the martyr's soul. All the martyr's soul shall be seen. John 17, verse 24. Father, I shall, I, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of this world. What a loving Jesus. He, he wants those that the Father gave him to come and see the glory of what the Father has given him. He wants to share the glory. He wants us to dine in that glory that the Father has given him. From the foundation of this earth, God has given him the, the glory. So when he came down here as a poor looking man, him did, him did rich long time. He owns everything, but he came like a poor man, like nobody just to make us to be rich and to make us to be somebody. Let us take these words seriously tonight. Philippians, Philippians, 3 verse 20 to 21 for our citizenship is in heaven i'm going to stay there for a while our citizenship is what is in heaven we don't have no citizenship down here when you're a child of god when you're a saint of god you are just passing through you are not a permanent resident down here you are a pilgrim, pilgrimer, going to a barren land, waiting for your citizenship to come to fulfillment. Waiting for heaven to receive you into your fullness of your citizenship. My God, don't lose your visa. I encourage you to leave from visa to citizenship. All, the <laughs> all those people who call themselves Christian that have visa, visa can't take you in. Visa don't give you no much, no much opportunities. But citizenship gives you full legal opportunity to everything in heaven. So no, no visa ship people can't go in. He said in Philippian here, he says citizenship your citizenship is in what? Heaven. So what are you going to do for the citizenship? You have to follow his law. For you to own that citizenship of, of, of heaven, you have to follow his law. <laughs> you can't break his law. Because if you break a law into a country that you have green cards, they will not give you citizenship because you are not worthy, you are not qualified, you are not full of integrity enough to hold their citizenship. It's so in heaven. Same way in heaven. If you break his law, you cannot get the heavenly citizenship. So I'm encouraging you, stop breaking the law of God that you can be legal citizen in heaven. And it's not when you come that document will sign. He only come to receive you. He process it. It's already processed in heaven, in the long book of life. So your name is in the long book of life before he come. Because you, you, your process are ready and it just coming to receive you. Just like at the end of the, 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 ent the, the entry, uh, when you enter the United States. You process from your country. When you come, they receive you. 
You come with your legal documents. So Christ is going to come with your, with your legal certificate that you are sister of heaven. Hmm? So you can't wait until the day when you come to get a legal citizenship. You now get none. Too late shall be that cry for legal citizenship. You got to get that legal citizenship now. And keep it safe. Any question? Second proposition. Jesus Christ is coming again to fashion and new the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. So that this miserable, <laughs> humiliated body full of wrinkles and all, <laughs> tired face, everything about that, this body, he's going to come and fashion it, put it back mm -mm, to, to match his glory. Baby all over. He's going to remade us, take off that weight of the world, and gave us a newness. Even the look is going to be different. Can I say it? Matthew 25, verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. A long time we we'll wait, but he's coming. Just be patient and don't backslide. Just be patient and don't get weary. Because he's coming. We're Matthew 25, verse 19 tells you, After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So let our wait be what? Let our wait in him in, with patience, holiness, righteousness, and faith. Let's take those three things and wait for him. Endurance. Matthew, 20, Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he render unto every man according to his deeds. Let us, talk, let us stay and deed for a minute. Deed mean is what you do. He said, I'm going to come and render every man according to his deeds. If you make a million bad deeds, I'm going to give you the million, the, the million just, 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 just judgment. You make a million good deeds, you give you a million stars in your crown. Star will be in your crown because it's going to judge you by your deeds. So when you're doing wrong deeds and believe that you're not going to be judged for it, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're going to be judged for every deed that you do. Many times one do deeds and believe that it's, oh, it just, it's just a simple thing. Oh, you, then we get over it. But will God get over it? <laughs> so you say, oh, that person will get over it. But remember that God can't get over sin. He have to judge sin. He have to judge it. So let our daily deeds be always good. Let them do you all the bad they want to do you. But let your daily deeds be always good. All right? Fourth proposition. Jesus Christ is coming again to render unto every man according to his deeds. It is, it is not at death, but at the coming of the Lord that we receive our full reward. Not at death. We don't receive this, this reward at death. Death we go to rest and wait for this reward. But it's a sure thing that is coming to give us our reward. Second Timothy 4 verse 8. Henceforth there is 
Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. All that love his appearing, that means you're prepared to receive him. Right? That means you're ready for him because that's why you love his appearing. So it, it, it's not going to be one person get that, that crown. All the people that, uh, that, that welcome his appearing will receive a what? A crown of righteousness. First Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd shall be manifested, he shall receive the crown of glory that faded not away. Then what? The chief shepherd shall be manifested. He shall receive the crown of glory that fed not away. So see, all of this crown that we are talking about, the king of, the, 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 the chief shepherd crown is different. It's something that cannot be fed away. Our crown will not fade away either because it will be under that crown. That crown covers us. Hmm? That crown will be the what? The chief over us. So that crown we will shine under that, that, that crown. Can I safely say that? If I'm wrong, you can call me and tell me that I'm wrong. Hmm? It's a Bible class. Hmm? We can reason. Hmm? Fifth proposition. Jesus Christ is coming again to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at in all who believes. So he's coming for a jubilee. Don't you think so? He's coming for a jubilee, a grand jubilee. And don't you want to be in that jubilee where you're happy? Would you don't want to be in that jubilee where you know you're part of that jubilee? You're not the one looking a place to hide, but you're a partaker of that jubilee. I'm encouraging all, I'm encouraging all of you out there in television land and radio land to make this be your marriage. Prepare yourself for your bridegroom. He's coming. There's no question about it. There's no argument about it. And it is one, as I, as I always said, this is an appointment that, not, that cannot be canceled. It cannot be rearranged. It's already, he already had that appointment set, sealed and signed, and we cannot change it. And he will not change it for us. When he already signed it, in, in, signed it to come. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? If he to come January 20th, he will not come January, January 21 for you. <laughs> He's coming January 20th. If he, I'm just saying, I'm just using that. So don't expect him to come January 20th and you, you stay to your lifestyle and expect him to cancel his date for you. <laughs> you better cancel your debt for him. You have to be ready and waiting for him. <laughs> so all the debt that you have, you better cancel them and make sure that when his debt comes, the appointment with him is one. You don't miss that appointment. Hmm? So I hope you learned something tonight from this part of this Bible class. I myself learned a lot through the Spirit of the Lord. And I hope you also learn from it. And next week, we, we will continue next week from the, the fifth proposition. We will continue. And then we'll go on to the, we'll finish this, this, this lesson next week. To go to the next lesson the other week. 
right? So close out the Bible, the, the teaching tonight. Let's go to some prior points. Now is the time we need prayer more than ever. We need prayer more than what? Ever. I mean, double up on your prayer life, triple it up. You know, and it's a season where you can, is it, is it a time to stay home and watch television and just live on the, on the, on, on the, 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 the <laughs> just live on the coronavirus story. Forget about corona. We know it is there. Just be safe. But don't make it to be a weight on you. Don't make it to be a, a talk of your home and you talk more about the corona than how you talk about Jesus. Don't take this time off. The whole world have a time off. Don't take this time off to still to go home. You're not going to work. Don't take time off to watch soap opera. I'll take time off to watch your favorite TV show. Get in the word. Draw more closer to the Lord. Get to know him more. That when you go back to church, you are a new creature. Huh? So spend the time more. It's, a, it's, a, it's an intimate time now. It seemed like Christ wasn't getting enough intimacy with you, with the world. So he, 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 he comes in a way that everybody can have some more intimacy with them. Let people be busy working three jobs, four jobs. Christian working four jobs. Christian working two, three jobs. What time do you have for your master? What time do you have for, 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 your, for your bridegroom? What time do a Christian have for the bridegroom when they work three and four job. Hmm? What time do you have for him? You neglect him. So he will neglect so you you so you fall into a neglect group. Because you, you you're just you're just thinking about yourself. I have to buy a house, I have to buy a car, I have to do this and that and neglect your bridegroom. Just like how some husband, some wife neglect their husband, that some, hu some, some husband neglect their wife, they go cheat. The only good thing about this one, him can't cheat. When, when you neglect somebody, you are neglecting your own self. You are messing up your own life. So I'm encouraging all of those Christians who was doing two or three jobs, set your life in a way we can give God more attention. All right? Make this time to be a renewal of your life, a renewal of your spirit with God, a renewal of your relationship with him. All righty? Let us go into our, our prayer points. So then we're going to ask God for fresh fire. We need fresh fire. And this is the time and the season that you can receive fresh fire if you spend time with him. A lot of you are, lot of you are fire dead. A lot of you don't have no fire left. Because the job and the world take away all your fire. <laughs> you know, because you're too busy, so you don't have no time to recharge. Now is the time you can really and truly recharge with the fire. So we're going to say this prayer point. You and Radio Land and TV Land can say it with me. Oh Lord, cleanse all the soil part of my life. Oh Lord, cleanse all the soil part of my life. Oh Lord, refresh every, every dry area of my life. Oh Lord, heal every wounded part of my life. Oh Lord, bind every evil rigidity in my life. Oh Lord, realign every satanic strain in my life. Oh Lord, let the fire of the Holy Spirit warm every satanic freeze in my life. Oh Lord, give me a life that killed death. Give me O oh Lord, kindle in me the fire of charity. O oh Lord, glue me together where I am opposed to myself. O oh Lord, glue me together 
In the sea the Lord, in which your people, who's crying out to you with your gifts. O oh Lord, quicken me and increase my desire for the things of heaven. O oh Lord, quicken me and increase my desire for the things of heaven. By your rulership, O oh Lord, let the loss of the flesh in my life die. By your rulership, O oh Lord, let the loss of the flesh in my life die. Lord Jesus, increase daily in my life. Lord Jesus, increase daily in my life. Lord Jesus, increase daily in my life. Lord, Je Lord Jesus, maintain your gift in my life. O oh Lord, refine and purge my heart. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, refine and purge my heart. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, inflame your f into my heart. Holy Spirit, inflame your fire into my heart. Lord Jesus, lay your hand upon me and quench my rebellious and quench every rebellion in me. Lord Jesus, lay your hands upon me and quench every call and ask any question you want to ask. If you can call and ask also, ask for prayer and someone will be here to take your call. Have a blessed night. Walk safe. Be careful. Walk with Jesus and